This is episode number 409 of WP Water Cooler State of the Word 2021 Recap. Brought to you by our friends over at WP All Import. Go check them out at WPAllImport.com if you want to learn how you can import content into your WordPress website easily. WPAllImport.com I'm Jason Tucker. You can find me at Jason Tucker on Twitter. You can find me over on JasonTucker.blog. That's Steve Zangit. He's not here today. But you can go take a, take a look at what you got going on over there at Zingy on Twitter. And Say Reed. She's not here either. But she's she can be found on all the things at Say Reed Media. And y'all know who it is. It's your boy Jason Cosper, aka Fat Mama Mike, back at it again on the world's most influential WordPress podcast. Speaking of podcasts, go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, where you can leave us a review. We'd really appreciate it. So we recast Steve for this episode with Daniel. Hey, Daniel. Hey. How's it going? <laughs> Good. And that beat was pumping. Dude, that beat was pumping. Was, I'm sorry. It was, I'm it was so loud that uh, Jim <laughs> on the live stream just could not hear us. That's okay. That's all right. I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it in post. That was good. Yeah. Which means I'm going to be, which means I'm going to be working my butt off today. Fun stuff. So, um, Daniel, can, can you tell yeah. us a little bit about you and then, and then also tell us why you're here. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> uh Daniel, Daniel Schutzmith. <laughs> uh, I'm a dev manager at, uh, Pinellas County government, uh, located in a uh, beautiful West side of, uh, Florida. Uh, I was at the, uh, the state of the word last week, um, coming on to tell you what happened <laughs> and what it was like to be there, be there in person a little bit. Awesome. Well, good to have you. You've been, um, you've been one of these people in our community that, um, shares our content. You jump into our chat and you say hi and you hang out and all that fun stuff. Um, it looks like you're also a fan of Roy in the back there. So I, I love that. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, I've said hi, Roy, <laughs> many times in my uh, presentations uh, at WordCamps, and um, yeah, just good, good to have you on. Good to have you on, and we really appreciate you uh, taking the time out. Yeah, so we did we did a two and uh, fifteen minutes of um, of stay of the word uh, live where we were essentially talking over it the the whole time. Um, right. It was it was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was. And, but there was some parts where I was just like, Matt, I, I need you to stop, bro. Like, I, I know you put it, you said you're going to do full two hours, but like, it's okay to stop now. Like, I, I heard I, there was it, animated it, GIFs. You had. Yeah. There were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was some fun stuff. But yeah, the, there was, there was a lot to consume within that, um, within that whole um, time span. Uh, what do you think is like a highlight that you have, Daniel? Like, while you were there live, is there like a, a live, something something that we well, may have missed yeah i mean the excitement of just being there in person again and being able to do that was was a, was really cool um absolutely i think the one thing uh, people mentioned it to me on twitter a bunch is that you know you see the photos of what uh of all of us there and everything that was going on and we were tightly packed for the actual uh the actual uh state of the word itself um but before that and after that we were kind of spread out into smaller groups of people you know kind of mingling around as really large space um but we were all vax so that was one of the requirements to be there and i went ahead and got vax to the max with a little booster as well so just to make sure i was all set um but inside the space i mean i think the you know the overall excitement of kind of what they were talking about more gutenberg stuff so if you if you you know really enjoyed gutenberg that's a huge thing to me that's a huge plus of what's going down um but uh, for me, I kind of straddle that world of like design and developer. And for me, the whole concept of like the pattern libraries and that whole, you know, that getting built out along with the full site editing, along with the emphasis on more block themes and, and the actual request from Matt to get more block themes out there was actually really exciting. Yeah. The block themes thing is, uh, an interesting one. Because essentially we're living in this weird spot right now where like not everything has been fully figured out yet. Right. <laughs> like I honestly, I think that even like the word themes needs to go away. Yeah. Because I don't a, even think a... it's a I don't think it's a theme anymore. 
And it's a weird experience right now, right? Um, yesterday I was doing a Twitter space with uh, Alan Bauer in, in Aruba. And um, one of the things we were talking about was the fact that, you know, it's a moving target. It's all in disarray. <laughs> this is coming from okay. Alan, who's already created some really, <laughs> really fascinating and popular block-based themes. So she, <laughs> if it's coming from her and she's saying this, then, it, that, that, you know, it's not that just us that are realizing that. Yeah. 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 I was sad that within this whole, this, this whole, uh, presentation, the, there is, there is so much hype, at least for us, at least from us, the, the pundits on the internet, the pundits on Twitter, um, about the NFT space and how we're just, oh man, like WordPress is just going to replace everything with NFTs. It's just going to, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. I was even waiting for something <laughs> like that where, where, you know. Uh, he was going to step down and be like, all right, so we have a DAO that's going to be running this whole thing. Uh, good luck, guys. Yeah, have a good one. Think, now, I, I was relieved, relieved that he just kind <laughs> of, I mean, he didn't necessarily poo-poo it, but he was definitely like, eh, NFTs yeah. are all right. Well, he was like, right. he was like, well, you know, the web two is really the web three. Like, look at us. So, <laughs> like, We're we right here. <laughs> Right. Well, they all come us. If yeah, if you I remember, think... if you remember the early days of Web two, people are like, "Oh, Web two is just JavaScript." Like I've been doing JavaScript on websites for years, and, like and bevel dynamic buttons. websites with JavaScript, right? And bevel buttons. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. The um, I mean, the interesting thing too is that it's a. Uh, I definitely think the whole Web3 NFT was a hook just to get people to come and watch watch the show and sure. see what they're going to talk about, especially yeah. from people outside the community, you know, from, from other sources. I mean, it sounds, it, sounds like a, it sounds like something we should be adding into our titles of our episodes, you know. We're, we're definitely going to talk about NFTs today. <laughs> yeah. There was a good, um, uh, Rachel Winchester brought up a good question up there, which is about a little bit about digital art and how that would work with the open verse and, and all of that, which I thought was interesting. Um, I still don't, you know, I can't qualify what digital art means, but it sounds really cool. And it sounds like something that would be, you know, really exciting to kind of put in there too, into the open verse and see how it works. Um, but every time we say open verse, I feel like this is the matrix and we're just going to float away or something. I mean, it, it, it all, it all starts for me with, I, I know that meta slash Facebook like started this whole like metaverse thing, but I, I right. feel like it goes back even further for me with, uh, Spider-Verse and, uh, oh, yeah. probably the best, the, the best Spider-Man movie. Yeah. Uh, the multiverse, right. Everything is just something verse now. And, uh, I remember, I mean. I'm, I'm old enough to remember that when we used to call like all of the blogs, uh, the blogosphere. So we just kind oh, of replaced yeah. sphere with verse, but let's bring back okay, whatever. Let's bring <laughs> back. Remember we had the blog roll. You'd be like, you're on the blog <laughs> roll. <laughs> yeah. Why not? We have talked about setting up another, uh, web ring. We, we have talked about web rings. Web ring. and having, having yeah. next and previous mm -hmm. and random. Yeah. We have talked about that. There's also, there's a block based theme now that someone put out, which is supposed to be like old school, like 1998, like design basically. So it would be great to just do a web ring of all those sites and then using that theme. <laughs> <laughs> the new WordPress. Everybody. Yeah. That could, that could be a, that could be a block that is added in like the web ring block. Yeah. And then. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah. The, um, uh. The thing I, I was really excited about, I mean, when it comes to those block-based themes, and th there's a lot of potential there, I think. It's just, you know, like we see, it's a moving target and a lot of things are in disarray. But um, the concept to me of taking the design system, and so, you know, you have your design system in Figma or Sketch or Adobe XD or something like that, and then being able to really, like, transpose that to WordPress and be able to use that as blocks and as a block-based theme, I think that's the game changer. And that's kind of what I've been trying yeah. to get to ever since I heard about, you know, Gutenberg and in what, 2018. Um, and here we are coming into our fourth year since then. And uh, mm -hmm. it's still really, really difficult and still moving target. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, I, I would, I would say that, um, it, it is a moving target. Um, and when Matt said like, 
I hope that when I give this talk next year, um, he's, he's like, if we only have like 40 block themes right. in the directory, like I'll see that as a failure. Um, but, um, you know, and he, he joked like 5,000 block themes. We're not going to hit that number, but I, I don't think it's because of the right. fact that this is kind of just, um, almost like, um, you know, tailwind or, um, you know, um, what's the, what's the Twitter one? Why am I Bootstrap. blanking on it? Bootstrap. Bootstrap. Thank you. Bootstrap. Yeah. Um, like that, that is basically, it's just going to be a little bit of flavor that you can put your blocks into yeah. like less than a theme. So, okay. Maybe mm -hmm. in the next year we'll hit, uh, 200 themes in the directory. Um, you know, maybe, you know, we'll, uh, you know, 10 X the amount of themes that we have in the, the block directory. Um, I, that's fine. Uh, we don't kind of, I, I think that choice is good, but I also think that you end up running into this like analysis paralysis when you present somebody oh, no. with so many themes, so yeah. many plugins, so many things like that. Uh, I, I think that, um, the things that hosts have been doing around adding, um, you know, particular plugins that they've curated and they've like guaranteed work on their platform and stuff like that and bundling them in with their, their packages. I know that, um, that liquid web does that. I know that uh, WP engine to some small extent does that as well. Like, um, you know, there are other hosts out there that are doing it. Uh, I, I think that's a, a good call to be mm. like, you know what, man, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, this form plugin or this, <laughs> this optimization plugin, yep. like we got that for you. Yep. Right. And that's right. a, I, I use WPMU for some, uh, some of my projects that are like smaller projects and WPMU's had a, uh, a good and bad reputation over the years. But, uh, if you're on their platform and using their products, it, everything works terrific. Like it's amazing. You know, they're, they're, sure. there are different pieces to it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, if, if, if you're, if you're somewhere else, it might not work so great, but yeah. right. as somebody who's had to troubleshoot a few of their things and I'm like, they did what? <laughs> but, uh, I mean, Hey, th they've, they've got a successful business built on this. They're, they're making money. Yeah. And like you said, as long as it's on their infrastructure, it works great. So yep. can't yeah. really complain about that. There was, um, there was one thing, uh, that I thought was missing was, uh, oh, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little boring. <laughs> there was a there was one thing that I thought was missing from that talk was um accessibility. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, you know, it, it had come up actually about just, you know, the night before on post status Slack and uh, then I came then it got taken to Twitter and, <laughs> and uh Matt Matt, you know, said a little bit of a comment in post status Slack to that, saying, you know, kind of comparing it to um uh, you know, there's a lot of things we should be concerned about or focusing on, you know, they are doing accessibility, but you know, it's just not something they're going to be talking about much in the, in the state of the word. But, um, but my concern is going to, I'm in government, I'm doing a lot of websites. Our sites have to be, you know, accessible. Um, but just in general, it's good practice. And there's no reason we shouldn't be doing that because that also would set us apart from the other content management systems out there that aren't doing that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was quite surprised that he didn't add in at least, you know, the sentence or two about that into, into there. Yeah. Yeah. It, it reminds me of like the, like mobile first, like think, think of like mobile first as being oh, okay. like yeah, something sure. that we, we've all, we've all strived for is to start working through mobile first. That has a bit of an accessibility component to it. It's not, it's not everything, sure. but it's, yeah. it, it may even be one of the first steps because it's like, well, this thing needs to work on with, with, within certain constraints. And then the next piece of it is those constraints are also visual. <laughs> sometimes they're audio. Sometimes they're just the way in which they're being displayed on the screen, they're, like all of that, like kind of all yeah. together. And it was, it was, it was, um, it did kind of sadden me that, you know, that, that we didn't talk about accessibility when we talked about we yeah when he talked about so many things that it just it's like man he could have spent some time talking about that and it didn't when happen that, when that conversation came up and post out of slack i was kind of lurking and, and watching it i spent probably like I, i'd say half an hour looking for i feel like it was a 99 percent invisible episode the the podcast 99 percent invisible mm. that uh was talking about uh how 
um, people in uh, wheelchairs uh, fought for like curb cuts, fought for mm. uh, accessibility ramps. Mm -hmm. And uh, they basically said that uh, one of the people on the show said, it's only a matter of time before you need accessibility too. Yeah. You might be able-bodied, totally. but I mean, you, you're going to get older and you're, you, the ramp is going to be easier than the stairs. Um, you're going to lose your eyesight. Maybe you want to, you know, um, maybe you want some extra audio description on things. Um, I mean, there, there's a whole cohort of, um, people who, uh, we have friends over and they ask us like when we're watching a, a movie or something like that, Hey, do you mind turning the captions on? Because totally. that's, that's how they prefer to watch movies and it seems to be like a growing yep. cohort all of this stuff is accessibility uh -huh. and all of this stuff benefits everybody everybody oh yeah yeah oh yeah i, I mean yep. i remember being a kid riding my bike around the neighborhood and doing little bunny hops off of curbs because it's like oh i hit the end of a curb there's no curb cut but now mm -hmm. i'm watching mm -hmm. my my nephews ride around on their bikes and every corner has a curb cut and they just down and it's it's no big yeah. deal uh i i feel a little pang of sadness because uh i was just like do you guys know how to do a bunny hop and they're like no because they don't need to <laughs> right but i mean they benefit from that as well, bike yeah. riders they yeah. benefit <laughs> So I, I wanted to speaking of that, I, I did want to I did want to mention something that um, that if I I mean I I think I don't know. Matt kept talking about his age. Oh and yeah, he kept talking that about how, how how much how much older he is, and I'm just like, dude. I mean, I think I I know I'm older than he is. Like I I I know I'm older than he is, and I'm one of those people that when I'm looking at TikToks. I skip TikToks that don't have captioning. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, sure. uh, yeah. but, you know, all the younger people are the ones leaving the captions. They're the ones that are putting the captions on. They're yep. spending the extra time making sure their stuff is accessible and all this stuff. So yep. it makes me think that that maybe Matt is feeling like he's older, but also I think he needs to start listening to the folks that are around him that are younger, that are maybe kind of providing some of this additional kind of uh, thought behind the accessibility stuff and the the, yeah. the way that we approach some of these things. So if he wants to feel older, cool, feel older. But if you're going to feel older, then make sure you're listening to the younger folks. And if you, if you, if, if he's just putting on a front that he is older, then he needs to listen to himself that he needs to <laughs> really look at kind of uh, making sure the accessibility and those sorts of things are, are kind of looked at. So I don't know, it was, yeah. a, it was an interesting thing that I kept noticing because he kept saying, you know, in his, in, in his older age, I don't want to put words in his mouth. These are, these are not the words that he said, but it was just one of those things where it's just like, he kept talking about being older. And I'm just like, dude, like Jim's in here saying that, like, you know, uh, he knows that he's twice his age. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. I'm 43, was, man. I totally get it. <laughs> you know, I, I understand, well, but and, and, I don't feel like well, I'm so old that I, I, I don't understand that these things exist in the world or anything like that. Uh, and I'm a pre pretty big believer age is a number. I mean, we're always learning unless, you know, again, you have a learning uh, incapacity and things, you know, going on like that. Um, totally. and I do, I have, I have ADHD. I take medication for it. I've done therapy for it for years, but, um, but one of the things I was going to mention was, uh, uh, you know, all we really have to look to is one of the biggest corporations out there, which you wouldn't think has good design inclusive pra pra uh, practic practicum, which is Microsoft. Um, so mm. Microsoft has a whole design toolkit, uh, about inclusive design. Um, it's inclusive on all fronts. It's, it's, you know, looking at, well, where are people being excluded from what we're creating? You know, what are the barriers that we're putting in there? So instead of saying, how can we include people in this? Say like, well, how are we excluding people from this? What are we doing wrong here right away? Um, and also a big emphasis of it too on their, their toolkit is actually looking at, and I shared the link in there and the thing, um, one of their emphasis is looking at, uh, you know, these temporary accessible moments. And that's what you were alluding to, Jason, which is like, you know, like someone might be pregnant and they can't, you know, do certain things with their mobility or right. someone might have twisted their ankle or, you know, you might take your glasses off at night and you can't see as well as you could with your glasses on, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of that that we're running into day to day. Uh, and now we just have to figure out ways to make that actually work 
uh, for everyone in a better way, especially online. It's it's interesting that you bring up uh, Microsoft. Uh, they have made one of the things that I think has been. Uh, there was a commercial about it a few years ago um, where the, the adaptive controller that they made yeah, for the Xbox. Xbox like, yeah, yeah it's awesome. which, it, I mean, it looks like uh, no controller I've ever seen before. Rad but, needed, that is what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I, I mean, it it is amazing the level of like adaptability that can happen with it. Like you can, you can program it all these like, Exactly. different ways there are people who play um with uh this controller like it, able able bodied people who play with this controller as well and um you know can manage uh to do just these like wild things with this controller that wouldn't have been possible but hey you know it was this this thing that you know was like okay we want accessibility is important yeah. to us let's make this happen and it sprung this whole like secondary industry out, out of uh, the of that controller, right? And that's a, that's a good point too because that controller, besides just being like a blown up version, it actually is programmable, so you can make it do different things and add other you know pieces onto it and stuff like you saw there. So there like there are stream deck for video games. Yeah. yeah. There, there is a, a very large hacker community around uh, that adaptive controller um, and, you know, using it for not only video games, but, you know, doing, like you said, like a, like a stream deck, like a smart home trigger, like all of these just like wild things. Uh, Nike, same thing. Uh, they made uh, these shoes that you just like step mm -hmm. into. I know that there was like a GIF like oh, traveling right. around uh a, a little while ago uh and there was a little bit of a, a hubbub around it because they proved so popular with everyone people are like yeah i want to step into my shoes i don't want to tie them like like let's uh they've spent the the past two years inside being lazy <laughs> and they don't mm -hmm. want to do anything about it so they're like ah screw it like I'll, I'll step into my shoes and uh everybody who's like hey but these shoes were made for people like us who have problems getting into and out of their shoes. And like, basically they got sold out by all the hype beasts who bought them up and like, Oh, look at these cool yeah. Nikes. So like now Nike has had to kick it into overdrive to like make more for the people who actually need them, but also have that demand. Like the, it's right. these things where it's like, you don't realize yeah. Uh, what the popularity of these things can actually do for people, not only the people you're trying to serve, but like the wider community. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can even go down to dark mode, just having dark mode in the oh, yeah. dashboard, Yeah, you know, yep. is, yeah. is, is gets you that same, that same level. And that was a, that was, that's a pain. That was a pain, pain um, for us. And, and yeah, and it's small, small wins too. I mean, just make the alt, make the alt tag, you know, not alt tag, <laughs> I should say the alt parameter, uh, be, be required, or at least be, you know, be a, a nag screen or something when someone's adding an image in there. So they know that something they should be doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the one thing as, I was going to mention somebody, too is, As somebody who learned to code HTML by hand in like 1995, 96, um, I, the first browser I ever used was links, which is a text-based browser, yep. uh, and all the images that I put on my site. Cause you know, yeah, I would use, um, Netscape and I would, you know, in the computer lab and everything else. But, uh, when I would dial up at home, I would browse the web on links. And I was like, well, people yeah. don't know that I downloaded this really cool, um, like drone, uh, the drone from Hoth on Star Wars. And it would just, it was like a, a horizontal rule and it would just go across the page over and over again. And um, I was like, but nobody knows like what that is. They, so I'm like, okay, so well, I gotta, I gotta plot this out for Link. So I've, I've been on the alt tag wave for ages oh, <laughs> at this point, like 25 years. No. Uh, and, so, but uh, it's just, it's a shocking amount of people who just don't take the effort to just be like a uh, guy holding fish or yeah. whatever, just, just a little bit of text. It's mm -hmm. not that yeah, much. Of a it also shows our age when we say alt tag. 
Absolutely. One thing, I, one thing I wanted to give note to and just give a little shine on was there's a WP Accessibility Day that's being put together. Um, I don't even okay. know if it's been done before or maybe it might be the first time. Um, but Amber Hines, H-I-N-D-S, I know, has been talking about it on Twitter and they're getting an active group together. And I believe they just met yesterday. Um, and people can reach out to me too. I'm just, I just joined that as well. But uh, it's just in the planning stages. So something like this is important and there are people out there that want to see it succeed and see it, you know, keep moving forward. Yeah, I just Absolutely. did a quick little search for it and it, it, it showed up as something that was planned for uh, October 2nd, 2020. And that was in Los Angeles. So that's very interesting to see, like, <laughs> is this, is this like another, you know, Hey, we need to, we need to kind of make this, make this happen now sort of thing. Yeah. You know? leading into yeah. what was going on during that year. Do you want to, uh, you want to end it on the, uh, <laughs> the comment about the, the lackluster <laughs> lack of emotion, it seemed for the event. Uh, Cause I didn't really get a wow factor out of this, even though I was there in person, if I wasn't there in person, it probably wouldn't have been the wow factor as much. Yeah. Sure. I mean, if you look, if you look at the, if you look at our, um, I know you didn't watch it cause you were there, but, um, towards the end of the episode or the end of the end of, end of what was happening in that two hour span. Um, yeah. I, I, I checked out, honestly, <laughs> I checked out and you could tell because my eyes were wandering around my, you know, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> my eyes started wandering around the 65 inch TV that I use when this is my monitor I and I'm just going like, I I'm done. Like Matt, I, I just need you to wrap <laughs> up, bro. I get it. But like, mm. I don't know. There's just too much. There's too many times that he kept mentioning that he was older and I was just kind of like, I'm older than you, bro. And I'm totally engaged. Let's make <laughs> this happen. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I, I do feel like there were a few non answers in there. Uh, a few, like, um, I feel like, especially you get, um, like, uh, Ali Demons asked about, uh, bringing younger people in. And, uh, then she mentioned oh, yeah. David Bissett. And uh, he was like, well, you took my answer. So now I'm going to spend five minutes talking about something that's slightly related. Same thing with uh, internet art. Like, uh, I don't really know what that is. So I'm just going to talk about this other thing. I kind of wanted to like that. It was, I, we kind of said it on our stream. It was sort of um, like a political, like politician-y sort of answer. Like when you watch somebody in a debate and they're at like a town hall and they're asked a question and they just want to hit their talking points. Right. And it was kind of frustrating. It was, it, it, it was frustrating because it's like, there could have been four more questions, you know? And some of those like things that he was just kind of like, just, just, uh, filling, filling time for, it was like, come on, man, move on to the next person. There's like 10 more people in that room that you could talk to. <laughs> yeah. Also, how, how weird was it, uh, when he asked, I mean, this, this is a nice, uh, a nice callback to, to word camps of old, uh, asking people to, to move forward in the rows. Like, can you guys all like right near the beginning of his, uh, his talk. I was, was one like, of those rows. <laughs> yeah. Can, can you guys, can you guys move up a row? And yeah. I was just like, uh, in this economy, come on, like, why? <laughs> I need to make sure let, the optics look good here. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Let, let people distance, please. Yeah. They, they had some fun. <laughs> he probably just wasn't thinking. I know they wanted it to look better on camera. That's for sure. Cause he said that when he's actually absolutely. Doing it. Yeah. Um, there's one thing I wanted to, to mention, and I don't think I'd do it justice if we didn't. I remember, uh, say had said on. Twitter, uh, that she was surprised at the comment that he made that Josefa was lead for the WordPress. Oh Foundation. yeah. When, in, when yeah. in actuality, she's the executive director from what I understand. So that was kind of an odd comment. Yeah. I'm trying to find it real quick in there in the video, but yeah, it, it was such a weird way of him. I, I don't even understand why he did that. It, it, I don't know for someone who probably has to introduce people all the time. It's very weird that he introduced her in that way. And it just, it just seems so odd. Right. It's, well, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, well, especially her. I mean, she's sure. Her. I, she's I was going to say, th 
the guy's got 1600 employees or something like that now. Like I understand if he gets some stuff mixed up, but right. Right. she's when, not a new hire. Someone, right. Exactly. She's, she's been around for ages and. And she's honestly eh. the voice of the voice of WordPress when it comes to, at least on the podcasting front. Um, I hear her way more than I hear him oh. and I'd probably want to hear her more than I'd want to hear him, um, in, in regards to the yeah. WordPress community. Um, I don't know. I, like, I, I, I don't get very, um, how do I put it? Like, I, I don't get very, uh, uh, like, like fanboy over a, an executive of a, of a company and, um, and someone who's, you know, one of the leaders in the space. He's just some dude. He, he wakes up just like I do. Sure. Nobody yeah. special. You know, he, he, he I, just, he just so happened to be in the right place at the right time and, and made some open source stuff that he was able to then turn into a business. And that's what he's kind of running off of. So I don't know, was, for me, that whole just stuff apart was it, it I don't know. It, I think I just, uh, and I really wish they would have said something on Twitter about it after all of us were talking about it. Yeah. I think I just actually figured out the answer to that because she is the open source division lead for automatic. So maybe he was thinking from the automatic, which so, is, this wasn't, this wasn't supposed to be an automatic. Right. And <laughs> so that was, that was one of the things that I mentioned a couple times <laughs> after this, after, and I know we're over time now, but after this whole, um, after this whole thing, I went on Twitter and I was like, who's the target audience for this? And we've always, we've said that mm, about our own show, yep. who's the target audience for this, but who's the target audience for that? And is it people that work for automatic? Is it the automatic? Um, is it the, the stakeholders in this? Is it the people that are, that are funding this thing? Like, who is it? Like who, who are the target audience for that particular, um, event? And obviously if, if you're, if, if this is what you're thinking, Daniel, it sounds like he thinks the target audience is the people that he reports to, and he does not report to us. <laughs> we're just, we're just the community. For the open source that's project. A, that's a good note to end on. <laughs> yeah. Here's <laughs> our outro. Hey, Daniel said to hit the button, so I hit the button. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. And go over to debutwarrow.com slash subscribe to subscribe to this and all the other podcasts that we put out in good Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify. And if you're watching us, it's on YouTube. Talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.